And welcome once again to another episode of the Horizon Roundtable. We just keep on keeping on. Um, I'm Bob McDonald. I can be found on Twitter at Bob McDonald, and I am at campuspressbox.com. And with me, as always, with undoubtedly a lot to say, Jimmy Lemke. Hey, this is Joe Dare. You just gotta keep on keeping on. You got, you know, lots of garden. You gotta dig it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm Panther U, Panther U.com. Panther U, Panther U.com. <laughs> uh, and the saga I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep humor because humor is what's going to get me through these, you know, these trying times of being a Panther basketball fan. Uh, Milwaukee is having some ve- Milwaukee's having some very very interesting things going on over there, and the, the, but the, the more on that continues. later. Because more first we want to talk. Yes, because while while yeah while Milwaukee is still going on and Wright State still looking for a head coach, we we've still got teams playing. We've got yeah. Valpo. And we've got we've got Valpo who, um, really they're they're heading. They're heading to New York. They're in Madison Square Garden for the uh, NIT semifinals. So it's fantastic. It, I love it. With it. Every, it's great. And it brings me back to something that we talked about a few episodes ago. Unfortunately, Syracuse making me eat my words completely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. In the Elite Eight, it makes me look stupid. Awesome. Yeah. Michigan State making me look even worse because they I picked them to finish in the uh, picked them in one of my brackets to win the win it all and they get bounced out in the first round so good times um but Valpo but with every passing game so yeah but you, my, you look, look at some of the perfect. teams that yeah. I'm sorry go ahead but you look at some of the teams that made it into the tournament and then you look at Valpo um I know we talked a little bit about Tulsa and you you made a strong argument for them to be in and then they turn around and lose to Michigan um uh, the other one that I, I we didn't even talk about and it was Vanderbilt yes and nobody clearly nobody at Vanderbilt was very impressed with them making it into the tournament either because they just got rid of Kevin Stallings. Well, they didn't get rid of Kevin the- Stallings. He he got he got rid of them because Kevin Stallings yeah. uh, took the vacant Pitt job, which I thought Pitt would be aiming a little higher in their coaching search. I'm a little confused. Yeah, um, there, there's there's some things going on at, between. But anyway, I didn't really see uh, Vanderbilt this year. I did not see being. I think if if it was Valpo, if you just switched Valpo and Vanderbilt, I don't think anybody would have argued about that. I really don't. And the way that Valpo has been playing in this NIT tournament kind of proves that because you know the first two games they won by double digits, and then yeah. the that final eight game against St. Mary's, another team who arguably, uh, who many people tried to make the argument to be as a bubble team as well. Um, and it was really close up until about, you know, two minutes left in the first half. And then Valpo just it destroyed the St. Mary's. It, 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 it wasn't really points. Valpo. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't really that Valpo had just blown them away offensively. It was that Valpo's defense. It was defense. They held them to thirteen points in twenty-two minutes. That was that was that was an that was the most outstanding display of defense I've seen in the postseason, and that's saying a lot. Any coach, any coach, I, I I've been talking as as you might imagine, um, I've been talking to a ton of coaches. Sure, um, just trying to you know trying to help you know get an idea of what. You know everything, all this impact that everything's happened with our, you know, our basketball program. So I'm talking to these guys, and um, we, yeah, you know, the the conversation happens all over week, all through text, and I I must have had three or four of them talk about how the second half of that Valpo St. Mary's game mm-hmm. would be like the kind of half that they would show to t- to their team in on tape and be like, this is how you play defense. Yeah. You, you, and they just locked him down. I mean, obviously, a player. You know, you don't have a lot of kids like Vasil Fernandez around the place. But it was. It's. It's. It's a great show of how that defense is just built around him. I was very impressed 
with yeah. Valpo. I, I thought that was their best. He put on uh, a clinic. <laughs> Michelle oh, Fernandez yeah. put on a defensive clinic. Yeah. I mean, I don't even – yeah, after a certain point, I don't think – I think the St. Mary's players were way too afraid to go in the paint because right? they knew what was up to, coming up at them. It, 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 he – Totally changes the game plan. When when Vashiel Fernandez is out of the game, the game changes because all of a sudden you can really sure. attack him. But when he is out or when he when he is in the game, you you don't have many options. You have to come at them from the perimeter. And if you're not shooting, game over. So if you're not shooting well, it's it, it's game over. So yeah. it's just basically and, and St. Mary's is St. Mary's is a pretty prolific team uh, prolific scoring team too so yeah, I um, say that's the west coast conference and scoring this year they were um they've obviously got several players that will be pro it, it was it was it was a sight to see and if Valpo, if that yeah. team shows up at madison Square garden valpo is going to walk away with the nit championship and i really hope they that's do that's what i'm thinking uh, that's the feather in the cap this conference needs in such a porous year, in such a difficult year for a lot of our programs. I mean, even the programs that did well. I mean, Wright State has this, you know, this this uncertainty hanging over their program. You know, we we underachieved, and our coach paid for it with his job. And now there's uncertainty with us, you know, with with, with our program. And then you know, Oakland's obviously got. A lot of players coming back. Green Bay is doing fine, but they're losing their two far and away best players. Um, mm-hmm. There's just so much uncertainty. So, and, and and we did not do well as a conference this season because, as a you know, as a as a conference, we you know we were what twenty. What do we finish? Twentieth in the RPI. I mean, it uh, was, yes, twenty. This is our worst year, maybe ever. Um, I, rem- I, th- I believe 04, 05, the year we went to the Sweet 16, was the previous worst year, at least since the name changed and Youngstown was added. Um, I believe we were 18th in the RPI in 04, 05. And we went to the Sweet 16. So, I mean, it wasn't like it was a total loss. I mean, that, that definitely saved it. But if, if, yeah. if we lost or say Brandon Cotton's shot had gone in and Detroit had gone to the tournament and got walloped and then we didn't, you know, do anything in the NIT like we like the year before, we only won the one game. I mean, it, it, if that had happened, 0405 would have gone down. It's just a terrible year for for the conference. And it, it's all, so I kind of see this NIT, you know, if Valpo wins the NIT, I see it as kind of a saving grace for the conference because we really yeah. need it. Uh, we really, really, no, really, really need it. Very, yeah, um, yeah, and and if anybody can do it, it's definitely going to be Valpo. I mean, you, you look at the you look at the team makeup, and you really they're they're on a mission. They're on a mission to prove to everybody that they belonged in that in the big tournament. As opposed, so I they're playing B now, mind you, they're playing BYU. So that's going to be a that's going to be a real tough game for them. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, well, just as anybody who's a college basketball fan, uh, we're, I'm, I'm a huge fan of of Collinsworth. Obvi- obviously, the pedigree and everybody can talk about his dad and everything, but but he's he's the kind of guard that is that real Mountain West guard. I realize they're not in the Mountain West anymore, but he's he's definitely yeah. the kind of that kind of like that. He's definitely that kind of col- what you think of when you think of a college basketball guard. I'm just, uh, yep. I'm just that off the ball guy. He's so so solid, and Valpo's gonna have their hands full with him. The Peters Collinsworth yeah. battle is a sight to see. The that's I, gonna I, be that's gonna be that's gonna be a hell of a game to watch just based on that matchup alone. Collinsworth versus I mean, Peters. That's uh, gonna be hell of a matchup. Each other, but what I, what, what I mean is that yeah, you, the Collinsworth yeah. and Peters. You know, oh, I know. Trading blow for blow, and yeah. ho- hopefully, what happens is that Collinsworth and Peters will trade blow for blow, and then you'll get enough blows from you know Keith Carter and Tavon Walker, and just mm-hmm. and just enough to put Valpo over the hump. Um, and hopefully, yeah. the defense can really figure out why, because 
if they do and Valpo walks away with the NIT championship, I think it's a great feather in the cap for this conference in a very terrible year. Yes. Um, but Valpo is not the only team. Um, we still, we still have a, the, the Horizon League still has a team playing. Um, haven't heard from them in a while, but this is the week that they, that uh, Oakland comes back and they're they're playing in the in that Vegas 16 tournament. Yeah, unfortunately for Greg Campy, it looks like he wasn't very successful at the tables. I hear he lost 20 bucks. <laughs> hey, always bet the colors, Coach. Always bet the colors. Not the. Uh, did, or at least odds are or, even, you know, same, same thing. Uh, or or play craps. Craps is a better game anyway. So I don't know what playing. I thought it was, but I'm not sure. So, um, but yeah, that, now the Vegas 16 is kind of an interesting type of tournament because we had really hoped there would actually be 16 gate teams in this tournament, but unfortunately, that's not what happened. It ended up being eight, and you can see just based on the makeup of the teams that are in this Vegas 16 tournament is that. Oakland with Kay Felder is kind of going to be that marquee team that everybody's going to be looking out for. I mean, how many of these other teams have a Sporting News third team All American on their team? Right. I, I, it's definitely a chance for Kay Felder to shine. Um, you get national television games for the con- for the conference for the team. So you know CBS you do, Sports because these not- are all because the yes this yeah. is and, and we I, I mean we could probably make the argument that this Vegas 16 team because because it, it, it's all, all for the next for you know Monday Tuesday Wednesday it's going to be all Vegas 16 all about the you know there's going to be a lot of that on on CBS Sportsnet um whereas if say for example they had gone to the CIT what would they what would it where would they would be you know weirdly scheduled games um, that can only be found on the internet. So uh, I, I think uh, Oakland kind of made the, the right choice as in terms of tournament. Um, I, again, my only, uh, my only hope is that they had had 16 as opposed to eight, but I have to say this as well. I think uh, just based on the, on the strength of the Vegas 16 Twitter account, I, I think they're going to – I think this tournament's going to do okay. Dude, the Vegas 16 Twitter account is incredible. Whoever runs that is just 100% uh, media savvy. They, it's like Absolutely. They, they came straight from the Trump campaign and right into the – right right into that. I mean, the, the guy's great. I mean, it, you have to be self-deprecating somehow when there's there's really no other way – that you can spin that there, because there's, there's no way to spin it. In the Vegas 16, you know that if you would be like, well, it was, it's for the year 16. It's not the 2016. You know, you, you can't, you yeah. can't, you know that nobody's going to accept that. So all you got to do is just be like, man, well, <laughs> and then just make fun of yourself. So I, I, I think that, that that person's got a great future in media relations because the guy is doing a great job. You're the best guy or gal, whoever's doing, he or she is doing a phenomenal job, and you know, good, good on them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, but uh, yeah, the, <laughs> just the, just the level of yeah, self-deprecation, and and uh, there's definitely some snark in there, which is you know, which we of course can appreciate a great deal. Oh, snark, snark is great, and if, <laughs> if it's done correctly, if you, if you do it like me, you tend to overdo it, and then you just end up you know shooting yourself in the foot, and then you know your athletic director is not going to want to talk to you again. So it's, it's just there a, you go. Exactly. So that's, yeah, the, yeah, I, I, they're playing, um, and the golden Grizzlies, they're going to be playing, uh, Tosin, Towson, the first, uh, that first game, uh, that's going to be a, that's going to be an evening game. It's going to be a six o'clock, uh, tip off there for them. Um, um, and then they get to play the uh, the winner of uh, Louisiana Tech and uh, Eastern Tennessee State. So, it, 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 the, the, <laughs> but the the yeah the um the interesting thing about the the way that this tournament is set up is that it is three straight ga- days of games. So you have to go through three straight you have to go through three straight games 
to three straight days to get through the turn uh, to get through this. Uh, sound familiar? <laughs> So it's, it's, it's fine. I think it's great. I think the uh, the idea of a bowl game for basketball is a great tagline. And they're really playing it up that way as a bowl game for basketball, which I think is the best. It's it's the they've really tried to step up the market. It looks like they the the organizers have really try worked on stepping up everything between the social media. Yeah, this one's run by BD Global. They're the same people that run the Golf Call Showcase that we were in this year yeah. as well as Green Bay was in last year. And any Green Bay fan, any, anybody anybody with Green Bay or, or Milwaukee or anybody, any of the other teams who have been in their tournaments will be able to tell you, like, you know, these guys know what they're doing as far as promoting. So, and it's a, and it's a – and it's in yeah. Mandalay Bay, and I, you know, looking at the pictures from Mandalay Bay, you, you think of some of the other buy tournaments that you know they're out there, and you look at if you have if you have X amount of money to spend, and you go to, you have a choice between going to the CIT where you don't know where you're gonna go, um, or Mandalay Bay. I, that's not really a hard choice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's why that's why this whole idea of a bowl game for basketball works because you you're you're showing the you, it, fans have a place to go to. It's a destination. Um, I, absolutely, I would, I would absolutely plan on you know attending if if I was a fan. And and I would be able to get a few they days off. Yeah. And they've and the best part of it is they've had two weeks they've had, they've got this two weeks where they've been able to plan been able to market been able to convince you know the 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 fan bases of each of these teams to you know take a trip down to Vegas I mean that's that's pretty it's pretty think, uh, smart yeah, the way they've done this for the fans that were hoping to get in the NCAA or NIT and had planned as such. It's a nice, it's a really nice consolation prize. Um, obviously, Vegas, as as the the nation's playground, already has a lot of people that are there to begin with. So sure. you exactly not, it's not like you are. Um, it's not like you're relying on the fans of Oakland and Louisiana Tech in Northern Illinois to yeah. feed, feed the Mandalay Bay Arena. I'm sure that the arena will have you know sparse. Oh, sure. Stuff. I'm sure it'll be like the Horizon League tournament where you'll have, you know, three or four, three, maybe 4,000 seats for most of the game. But you know that title game with all the people betting on it's going to have a nice, have a nice sure. turnout and it's going to be a nice, it's going to be a real nice game. Well, and- yeah, I would be, sur- I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised. I, I wouldn't sell, uh, honestly, surprised you bring up the betting part of it. I would be, I wouldn't sell this for the crowd short because, you know, you know, if you're a gambler, you're if you're a basketball gambler, you're betting on any games. I I think the funny thing that I have seen over the course of this past year, um, just from a Cleveland State standpoint, where there's not a lot of people who weren't paying att- who were paying attention to it after a certain point, the ones who were were all the gambling guys. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I venture to guess that there's going to be. I think just based on that standpoint, um, and again, you know. Vegas is an entertainment town, and so um, if you can convince uh, if you can convince somebody to not go to see Britney Spears and go to the Vegas 16, well, good for college basketball. Right. Oh, yeah, it's excellent. So. It, it's just it's 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 something else. Um, you know, unless the NCAA or NIT is going to expand and get rid of these other tournaments, who cares? I mean, isn't part of the draw of the NIT to get to Madison Square Garden and be in Madison Square Garden and check out Madison Square Garden and everything that comes along with that? That's that's the great thing about the NIT. So obviously, you're going to want to be part of the, you know part of this uh, Vegas experience. So yeah, yeah, you know, maybe. There's and I, a, and I think that maybe. And I think what the big thing, and I think that's and it, what's what's surprising to me is that um, you have such a destination like Vegas, and this is a t- this turned out to be a tournament full of mid majors. We the, a lot of people thought that perhaps maybe uh, some of the higher major teams might you know take a look at this tournament. Doesn't look like that's what happened this season. Um, 
maybe um, maybe they'll turn around and look at it and say maybe next year, you know, this, this might be an alternative for them. Yeah. So uh, I had heard I I've, I've like I said I've been talking to coaches and plenty of these coaches are high majors and what what I kind of what I have kind of gathered and I've also talked to a few coaches that are in this um in this you know tournament that, that in the Vegas mm-hmm. and what we, they all kind of what I kind of held held is that a lot of these high majors were talking to BD Global about being a part of the mm-hmm. tournament and it was kind of yeah. like a strict thing and they're all kind of taking a wait and see because if so so yeah. does have a chance here if this tournament succeeds and you know the, i think you'll see a lot of high majors take it over in the next couple of years i don't think, i think it, yeah i don't think the 18 tournament the eight team tournament is a drawback um right i think it's more the promotion and you know how do you get butts in the seats and how is the experience for the team? Yeah. So, you have, well, you have, near as I can tell, they seem to be having fun. So. <laughs> yeah, the, the the team seem to be having a great time, which is good for them. Did you see the? Did you see the old, except the, for except for ex, except for Greg Campy, who lost money. So. Uh, I think he only lost like twenty bucks. So I think he'll live. But yeah. do you see the uh, do you see the Oakland player? Uh, they had, they had <laughs> a screenshot of the team photo. And they they caught him ogling one of the one of the showgirls. Oh, <laughs> I, the- I, oh man, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's good. It's it's fun. That's what college basketball is. That's why the NCAA tournament is so popular, is because you get these kids that don't have. You know, these kids are most of these kids are not going pro. For a, for yeah. a buddy heel that is ha- for everybody heel that's having fun and is going to be an NBA lottery pick. There are a hundred guys who are looking at their last, you know, days of being college basketball players, and yeah. they're looking in every moment. And that's what makes the NCAA tournament better than everything else, as far as sports are concerned. It's why the dance is the best. So when the, these Vegas sixteen kind of tournaments flick, flicker up. It's another, it's another experience, and you get these kids that are very wide-eyed, and they're they're getting an education. They're still very much student athletes in a lot of ways, and they're young kids, so it's good to see them get this experience. Um, from what I from what I've gathered, you can expect more high majors if the you can expect sure. the high majors to really dig and buy into that tournament if it succeeds, you know, as it stands. But. Yeah. I'm just, I just. I really hope that it does well because I, you know, I've got. I, I've got. I like the idea. We have friends that are in the tournament. This, uh, we've got Oakland, the team that's in the tournament. So I really hope it does well yeah. because we yeah, do absolutely. need. Yeah, I, I have to admit when when they when they spend a couple of days trying to fumble around with the brackets for this, I, I was a little concerned um, with kind of how this was going to end up, but you know. But again, they kind of they you know they kind of owned it, and they you know they you know they kind of they, they they rolled with it, and you know that that's something about you know yeah I guess uh you know in in the to throw a bunch of uh, Vegas cliches down they they, they doubled down on it and uh, looks like they want to uh, see if they can uh, you know cash out at the end and I, I realistically I think they 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 have a good shot they have a good shot yes. Other metaphors um, involving betting money. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of them. So um, let's go ahead and get into the uh, – while we've got the two teams that are in the postseason, we, we've got two teams that are looking for coaches. Um, Dayton Daily News is reporting that Wright State is looking theoretically at um, hiring a coach – in the next, looks like um, I they put up a the Dayton Daily News earlier this week put up a list of coaches that I think they just pulled out of their ass. Um, <laughs> I I think uh, I think the list that Bob Grant has is probably a little different than what the Dayton Daily News had. I don't know what Bob Grant more than somewhat was. was Bob Grant a, a Dayton guy like was he like a University of Dayton guy. Because I the, don't the, know sense if he was a UD guy. If he's not a UD guy, then the list makes no sense whatsoever. It looks like well, they just put it together on their own. 
Like, no, I mean, yeah, it, the, the the two the two reasons that I think of this list is that list from the Dayton Daily News is kind of a I'm having a slow news day and I need to write something about this type of thing is that they included on that list two high school coaches. Seriously, yeah, two high school uh, coaches, including uh, including, and this one the, this one I thought was especially amusing. The head dar, uh, the head coach at um, Dayton Thurgood Marshall High School, who happens to have uh, two seniors. One of them is the coach's son, who I believe is not committed to anywhere yet. The other one is Evan Claiborne. And do you know why I know that name, Jimmy? Because he's on Cleveland State's recruiting list. He signed his. He signed his. No, he's a signed Cleveland State recruit. He signed in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> he he oh, signed on the yeah, dotted line in the fall. So I thought that was. I thought that was amusing. They added that guy in there. Yeah, it wouldn't be the absolute first time that a high school coach was made a uh, head coach of a Division One program at our level. Um, obviously, we're talking about. Uh, I'm talking about Akron. I believe Keith Dambrell went straight from St. Vincent, St. Mary's to Akron. Or, no, am, am I? Yes. Dambrell Dambra used to coach in the MAC many years ago. Um, he actually, I the reason that I know about, I know about the racial slur or whatever it was that he used. In yeah, the I, like I, something I remember like that, hearing, yeah. but like what I'm saying is like he, he had kind of been excommunicated. And then afterwards, but but he, he wasn't. But but the, but the difference between Dan Brod and uh, these other guys is that Dan Brod had coaching experience at the Division One. Le- had coaching had coaching experience at the college level. These guys don't. <laughs> I mean, the only I think the for as near as I, the, from what I could gather, the only claim to fame that these guys have is they used to be used to co- they used to play basketball at Dayton. I think that was about it. And it was, uh, yeah, it was central. Yeah, it was central Michigan. Actually, he was, uh, he was actually the head coach at central Michigan. Um, yeah, he were, he's um, the guy who replaced Charlie Coles. When Akron hired him. He was, when Akron hired him, he had come straight from St. Vincent's, right? Yeah, he did. And he was actually an assistant. And after St. Vincent, St. Mary's, he was actually, he was actually an assistant from 2001 to 2004 under, Dan, uh, Dan Hipshire, who I, okay, if I understand correctly, also lost his job this season too again. Um, but yeah, Dan, Dan Brot, yeah, Dan Brot was there. I think LeBron's sophomore year, I think it was, um, and then he moved over to like for two years in varsity. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah, so yeah, and he had, but yeah, he was the. At Akron, I believe he had two of LeBron's friends, Romeo Travis. Yeah, Drew Joyce. And the, yeah, Romeo Travis, Drew Joyce the third. Yep. So, so, but, but, regardless, again, his background, his background prior to being excommunicated was was in was as a college coach. I mean, he had coached at Division II Tiffin. He coached at Dashlin, and then he ended up at Central Michigan, where he kind of. He, kind of screwed the pooch um, and was excommunicated. So, but these guys, the guys that these guys are coming straight from high school. So it's, yeah, I, 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 I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, unless, unless Bob Grant is a Dayton guy. And I, I'm unfortunately, I to listeners. I didn't research as to where Bob Grant comes from um, in Milwaukee. Well, no, you couldn't anyway, because he, you couldn't anyway because he blocked you on Twitter. So I mean, you couldn't really do anything about that. I, 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 I will, I will say this. I will say this. I, I have apparently I have not sparked the ire of Bob Grant. Been, I have not yet been blocked. So apparently I, I didn't say. Apparently I didn't say enough about him in the last episode to warrant a, a blocking. So, um, you know, I, I guess I, I guess we have proven now that I am, I am the good cop to your decidedly bad cop on this particular matter. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> All right. That works for me. But, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but Bob Grant, actually, um, since we are talking about Bob Grant, Bob Grant is in fact a, is in fact a right state alum. Oh. Um, 
Yeah, he, so he actually is a Wright State alum. So uh, why are we talking about? Isn't Vitaly Potapenko? Uh, yes, he did. And oh, by the way, Vitaly. Uh, yes, and he was a lottery pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And he played like maybe a, he was he was he he was drafted in '96, the same year. Uh, he the Cavs had two picks that year. Vitaly Potapenko was one of them, and Zdrina Sigalskis was the second one. And okay. um, I only knew about who Vitaly was because I am old. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, basically he has been. You know, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. Uh, I think I think the the reasoning behind um, the reasoning behind the the Dayton heavy. Uh, kind of suggestions from the Dayton Daily News is, as I understand it from Wright State fans, is that there is a very heavy Dayton slant with the Dayton Daily News. So, um, so take that list with a gigantic grain of salt. I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if I if we saw somebody on there get hired that wasn't on that list. All right. So, um, so, so yeah. So finally. Um, no, 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 no podcast would be, (laughs) would be complete without the ever, uh, the ever changing saga at Milwaukee, where still don't know who your coach is going to be and don't know which players are going to be there when they get there. Um, because obviously three of three of, uh, three Panther players have requested their, were, have requested and been granted their release. Um, that would include Akeem Springs and Jordan Johnson, um, yep. which is not good considering he was only the, he was the second, he was the, he was second in assist in the entire conference, um, plus Austin Arians. So, um, so if you, uh, I, it's, I, I feel for you guys. I, you know, that's obviously a fluid situation. Um, and it's just getting, it just looks like it's getting worse by the day, man. <laughs> I just care about these kids to be like at this, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm, I've obviously uh, been friends friendly with this staff for sure. You know, uh, I was a student, and the writing for the UWM post, I, I used to annoy Peter a lot. And then I stopped you know, being the student writer and I started, you know, really focusing on being a fan. And I got, I grew, grew close to those guys over the years. <clears throat> so there's obviously, you know, some connection there. Obviously I have some bias, but those guys are no longer our coaches. So what I care about now is the, the guys. Um, yeah. I've, I've spoken with, uh, several of them. They had a meeting with our athletic director at the beginning of this week, Monday. Um, yes. None of them are very part. They don't trust her. Uh, is is to be flat out. But what I to say is that they do not trust the athletic director. So there is. Mm-hmm. But I will say this is that none of them have made the decision to transfer. Okay. And none of them require her to be gone. To stay. So, if anybody, if anybody you know, listening is a is an Amanda Braun, uh, you know, supporter, you know, good for good for them. Um, the the good news there is that she could still be athletic director, and Akeem Springs and the players will stay. What matters is who is hired to replace Rob Jeter and his staff. And uh, the list is nice. Um, Isaac Chu at Virginia Tech was is a is a name that. You know, we're familiar with in Milwaukee because he was on Buzz Williams' staff at Marquette. Uh, he's still on Buzz Williams' staff just at Virginia Tech. Um, Dwayne Stevens, who's the uh, lead assistant at Michigan State. Uh, have Let's see, who else is on the list? Um, Northwestern, uh, uh, Pat. Uh, God, why can I not remember the guy's name? <laughs> It's, it's it's escaping me because I just I haven't um, he's the one guy that I've never met before <laughs> he's the one guy I haven't met before on this list um, it's just a it's it's a it's a nice list I want to mm-hmm. I want to while we're talking because I don't want to feel I'm just having a bit of 
brain fart. Um, yeah, that would be not a good idea. Um, the, now, sorry, the one guy on that list that Jeff Goodman had put out the other day from yeah, Jeff Goodman from ESPN, and I got that list. I got that list. Uh, probably the same time he did from from probably the same source because the, the order of the list um the order of the list that I, as i got it was the same order that jeff goodman had put it out as um i had talked the person that i talked to i was like i'm gonna go and i'm gonna look over this list while i'm waiting for confirmation from somebody uh-huh and while i was waiting for confirmation so I, I think that the that the person who gave it to me gave it to a few people. Um, that oh, I'm sure they did. Uh, that, that's typically that what happens. So. Person's a member of the media and he listens to this podcast, so you should have put it out, man. Um, <laughs> it's it's a, it's, it's a good list. It's I'm I support uh, I'm going to support whoever hired. Uh, I'm I'm going to. I don't hate the list. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think it's a bad list. Uh, I think that the search firm that was put together uh, by the university, the the search firm that was hired, and the search and screen uh-huh. committee that is putting together, you know, is, is doing the, you know, background checks and everything. I think they're doing a pretty good job. Um, okay. Dwayne Stevens is nice. The the one name that'll pop out at everybody is Chris Lowry. Chris Lowry was the assistant for uh, he was an assistant for Bruce Weber. He still he is now again at Kansas State. Um, okay. He is a he's an assistant at Kansas State for Bruce Weber. He was the head coach at Southern Illinois from see it's O four to O for two thousand twelve or something like that. Um, okay. He did pretty well. They had a he had a sweet sixteen and what was it, five or six. Uh, it was 06 because okay. we were the mid major at Sweet 16 and 05. And then he, okay. and then he basically just, the team just fell off completely. Um, if this is the list, uh, there, there, a few things are pretty apparent. Number one, it, it looks to me like the real problem wasn't Rob Jeter, but Rob Jeter's contract. Uh, because ah. this is a list of guys that look quite a lot like Rob Jeter. And I'm not saying it because. The list is entirely black. I'm saying it because all these guys look are, are about high, are high major assistants who have, uh, who are are hailed as good recruiters, but don't have any actual like head coaching experience. And then you get Lowry, <coughs> who basically rode Southern Illinois into the ground. Um, I don't know if that was his fault or if the administration at that school just had had no interest in supporting the program. Um, okay. It's not, I, you never know. Sometimes good coaches will get into really bad situations and maybe things turn south at Southern Illinois for that. So it's it's interesting to see Chris Lowry on that list when his last year at Southern Illinois was like 9-23 and 23 or something like that. And yet Rob Jeter is twenty and thirteen and fired, and he yeah. is the coach, and you would be keeping the entire roster. Mm-hmm. It's 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 just really it's a really weird list. Um, if you're somebody who's really looking to upgrade, as a lot of people have said, this is an odd list because this is a list of guys that are basically Rob Jeter. So what? <laughs> What what are what are we looking at here? So, um, on the list because I was a big I'm a big supporter of Rob Jeter. Okay, obviously the like, talent on the list, and um, I, I know that there are guys that are succeed that could succeed here if given the sure. proper support. So uh, you know, who um, yeah. So, but the the one that um, we're gonna, I wanted to wrap it. I wanted to wrap things up. One last thing, Jimmy, and I know this is near and dear to your heart. Something is going on on your in your within your fan base right now, particularly your message boards, that is a little <laughs> off. How long? Um, do you want to make sure that I give uh, the readers no one. 
<laughs> How long? Um, uh, unfortunately, you only got a couple minutes, man. <laughs> The we have we have uh, we've had we have two message boards. One is the UWM Freak board, and that that board has yes. existed since 2002. That, that message board is um, very much it, it was it is by far the the highest membership in the Horizon League. Um, yes, it's I don't know if it's the most active. I think Wright State's probably the most active. Maybe Valpo, but mm-hmm. we have the most members because we've. We built up quite a lot in the successful years of the mid two thousand. The second board, it's my board with PantherU.com. I started that one in November of twenty eleven, I believe is I'm trying to remember is when we started. But the point is so, that the board really didn't exist much because I had tried to get people over. Um, we have a premium section of the forum, but the freak board was so high in its membership and active so people really didn't you know move over and when things became inactive they would become inactive everywhere so it was hard for me to really get things started until this last week Early this week so, so, so uh, we, people who don't know obviously we've been talking about amanda braun the athletic director and what i how i and quite a few people including our now former biggest donor david nicholas we, we see her job as athletic director to be um, unsatisfactory to say the least. So okay. the UWM Freak Board has an admin, an, an admin who nobody knows who it is. Uh, I believed it was somebody who is an Amanda supporter and donor who is increasing his donations, as he told me. Um, is the only person who has told me that he's increasing his donations, by the way. Because he really okay. wants to. So, he, so he, yeah, he, so I. The admin. So, we don't know who this admin is. All we know is that this admin didn't like the arguments that were going on between the Milwaukee fans on that board, as well as the brand new characters that had not been a part of the message board at all before and were really getting hammered by, by because everybody pretty much saw them as surrogates for Amanda Braun who are jumping onto the message board to fight her battles for her in the online community. And they're all doing it anonymously. So there's no, you know, there's no like saying who this person is or who there isn't. Um, I I talked to a lot of these people. So I kind of, and and I've, I've gotten to know plenty of them over the years. So I, I, I was trying, I, I thought, I think I know who a couple of them are. But the, the the point is, it doesn't matter. I, I had I had gone on there and been like, look, you know, you know, moderators can see because I used to be a moderator. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you can see IP addresses. Just, just like, just, like just sitting in the athletic department and sitting on those message boards and posting. Whoever can see, whoever's a moderator or the admin can see what your IP address is. So don't go out there like trying to act like. You know, act all big and bad and act like a fan when somebody who disagrees with you can find out. But so, so the admin got angry at that because I, I wasn't threatening to out the guy. I was just saying, did you mean that, I, that I could see it? I didn't. And, 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 and also, too, you are giving them an alternative, to, an alternative message board, too. So um, I, I don't know what to tell you about that situation except good luck. So. Um, <laughs> Backslash forum, everybody. We have a growing membership. I have decided that any new membership money that uh, that anybody, anybody, if you want, decide that you don't want the regular free board and you want to be a part of the premium board, um, we do talk about the Horizon League things. There are some things that would be interesting to members of Horizon League schools that are on the premium private forum. If you want to be a part of that, it's twenty five bucks a year. Um, if you, if you don't, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, most, anything Panther, you news and, you know, breaking news stuff I'm putting on that board now. I'm, uh, I'm, and with that, and with that shameless plug of <laughs> he's, where he's, he's, I, <laughs> the shameless is okay. Any yeah. new, all right. Any new membership fees that I pull in, in the, in the next month will all go directly to the general scholarship fund at UWM. I'm not keeping All a right. diamond. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up here. We're, we'll talk to you next week. We got. We still have. We, we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about where what Valpo did in Madison Square Garden. We'll talk about what Oakland did in uh, 
in uh, in Vegas, and I think that's probably going to be the end of the ball game for us next week. So we would it be if we were talking about two postseason tournament championships for Horizon League yes. teams? So that all right. Fun. Well, we'll catch. Yeah, it is. So um, we'll catch you next week. Again, you can catch us. On, you can find us on fourlights.fm um, and wherever good podcasts or uh, book podcasts are found. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody.